Hey everyone, so today's video I wanted to discuss solar production because we get a lot of questions regarding how your system might be operating and it gets a little confusing because solar production changes throughout the seasons. So it's hard for you to visualize how your solar system is going to work throughout the seasons without having a full 12 months of energy production. So I thought this video would be really helpful for us to actually look at a system from a customer that's had 12 months of energy production as well as 12 months of energy usage. So you can see consumption to energy production as well since we include consumption monitoring with our in-phase systems. With that said, if you're someone interested in going solar and you're looking to get a quote because you live here in Southern California, then visit us online to request your hassle-free quote. We really do make it easy and affordable for you to make the switch to clean renewable energy with a premium solar system. All right, so I picked two of our past customers to show you how their energy production changes throughout the course of 12 months. A lot of our customers have a hard time visualizing the difference in energy production over a 12 month period because of the seasons. Remember the sun's orientation to us does change depending on the season. So in the winter months, the sun tends to sit a lot lower in the sky compared to the summer months where it's sitting a lot higher. And that in turn, changes how much energy your system will produce. That's why when you go solar, we're always talking about annual kilowatt hours of production to your annual energy consumption in kilowatt hours. We're not looking at it so much on a day-to-day -day basis, but over the course of 12 months. Now, this particular customer has a system that generated 12,400 kilowatt hours and they only actually consumed 10,200. So they ended up with credits with the utility company, meaning that they should have had a net zero bill at the end of the year. As you can see, starting in October, energy production was in the you know 30s for their daily production and it kind of goes down and remember solar production varies as you can see day to day i have this charted out with over 365 days of energy production so this linear line is indicating each individual day every little adjustment that occurs over the course of the season and you can see solar production is starting to go down now for most customers their lowest point in our area is going to be between December and January. That's where your solar production is going to be the lowest. But that's okay because as you can see, your, your peak is right around the corner. So once you get out of January, that solar production just starts climbing and climbing and climbing. Remember, you can't control the weather. No one can. So you're going to have days where solar production is low because of whatever conditions that might be dictating that. Maybe it's shading, maybe it's clouds, maybe it's rain, maybe it's a combination of things. So you can see their solar production reaches a peak in about May, which for most peak production should be between May and August. That's when you're going to generate the most energy from your solar panels. And now after you get out of August, solar production tends to start tapering down and you back to winter production. So you can see it tapered back down and then we're starting back over over here. This cycle just keeps repeating itself. Now I have another system to show you in a different area. So this particular project was in LA. This particular project is here in Temecula. So you can see their solar production is starting off relatively high. And then again, it's tapering down. Here we are December, January at the lowest point and it starts tapering back up. Solar production reaches a peak in about June. Like I said, between May through August is when your peak production is going to occur. So for them, they hit that point about 60 kilowatt hours produced in one day. Again, this production is gonna vary every single day. There's so many variables. No matter how good the software is, it's always going to be an estimate when it comes to your energy production. So I'm gonna graph out their consumption data because I actually have that for you. So if we look at consumption data, click done, bam. So 
this person has multiple electric vehicles and you can see how big of an impact it makes compared to solar production. Now, we literally put the maximum number of modules we could fit on their roof. I believe they have about 50 panels, 48 panels in total. They were all high wattage modules using Enphase IQ microinverters. So we had north, south, east, west orientation going on Every roof we could put a panel on, we installed it. So there's no more room for us to install any more power. The amount of electricity they were buying was is high, over 21,000. So their energy usage hasn't changed after going solar. But what has changed is how much they have to pay the utility company. So in this particular situation at their true up, they paid less than $2,000 for the whole year. That was a lot less compared to what they were paying, which was roughly five to $600 on average per month. So they literally paid $2,000 for 12 months worth of energy from the utility company after their initial investment of the solar system. It's still a substantial savings for them with a return on investment of around six years. Now, the other system, this one, their solar production exceeded their consumption. So they did not end up with a bill at the end of the year. So if we drag that over, you can still see how it looks. And you can see that energy consumption and production tend to line up a lot more often. Now, they did buy an electric vehicle in the last six months of the report that we generated. And you can see how much of an impact an electric vehicle makes on your energy usage. They have a day that's nearly 93 kilowatt hours. Now, depending on how frequently they charge their EV, this system was designed to try and account for it. And obviously it's doing a pretty good job. So they still have a little bit of a buffer here. Now, if they do exceed their energy production, that's okay because the amount they'll pay Edison is marginal compared to the cost they spent purchasing gasoline or diesel to drive their vehicle. At least you now have a pretty good visualization of how solar production changes over the seasons as well as how an electric vehicle can impact your energy consumption to your solar system's production. If you're interested in getting quote and having a better understanding of how solar can save you money, then visit us online by using the link in the description below. We really do make it as easy as we can and as affordable as we can to offer you premium products with premium service up front. So go ahead, use that link. And of course, if you're interested in subscribing to the channel, you should do that and give this video a thumbs up because I'm sure some of you found it very helpful. And of course, check out our membership program down below that we have available now for you to get extra perks from the channel. So check that link out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.